Hello everybody, welcome back to Wappleville here. Something a little bit different. Nothing from Middle Earth. I believe this is from Clay Sinai Miniatures, and this was something that I actually put on another one of these uh, fabulous wooden, that's not wooden plants here. Now a 3D print there. This is also a uh, 3D print. And we're going to try and do this sort of a peacock color scheme. I don't know how it's going to work out. I mean, we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe it works out great. Uh, we'll see what happens. Going to do the skin slash body whatever in blue, like you see over there. Then we have to see what we're going to do with things like the arms. And that uh, looks like back here, that's actually more of a bright green. So we'll have to do some of that kind of stuff. Hey there, Landrast. Hopefully the RPG stuff goes goes well. Um, <coughs> I'm sure everybody is uh, probably still uh, intact, at least. I'm I'm pretty sure. Hopefully everybody's having a blast. Say hi to everybody for me. How's about a little bit of a Prussian blue to get things underway here? Now this is the, what oh, was it, the, the uh, Alkid stuff, so not the fast map, but it is from Windsor Newton. That would be the, uh, hey there Crazy Wolf, nice to see you. Nice to see you, happy Saturday. The Griffin stuff, again, that is from, uh, from Windsor Newton. What I have noticed with the, the Griffin stuff is that it does, uh, or, or any of the Elkid stuff, it does have a bit of a sheen to it. So, make of that uh, what you will. And I extend this out here. Then we'll start to get some of the, the greenish colors in there too. What do we got going on? Do we have the hand? Uh, now what the hell? We'll just get the whole the whole foot here. Well, but if those are feet. Nice to see you again there, Crazy Wolf. Hope that you're doing well. And thanks for coming in, Armored Wolf. Appreciate that. Hopefully the tournament hasn't had any, uh, you know, those kind of difficult rulings or something like that. That, uh, that can certainly happen. Uh, no, 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 not yet, not yet. I'm going to get me more of the uh, Indian yellow into that. It's going to be a bit of a stronger green, but hopefully something's still got some staining power to it. And away we go. In through the wings, let the blue get in there too. Hey there, Spitfire Miniature and Sage Mountain. I hope that you're doing well there, Tina. Thank you so much. Happy Saturday to everybody. Uh, so Spitfire Miniatures, great to see you back. Where's our... Oh, here is... Uh, so this was our stream last night. We got that ornament all painted up there. Very fun. So the Argonoth joins Minas Morgul and uh, somewhere, wherever the heck the Shire is, I still haven't found that ornament yet. That's getting a little crazy because, well, it's got to be in the house because it never would have, certainly wouldn't have left the house. So I have no idea where the heck that went to. Uh, what are we doing here? I'll get a little bit more of our green down here again. Let it... Uh, no problem if it mixes with the blue a little bit. Creates a little bit of a, a little color transition there. So yeah, Tina, we painted the uh, the Shire ornament. A couple what was that last week? Yeah, uh, last Thursday. This Thursday we did. No, there was two Thursdays. Oh, that's right. No, this Thursday we did Minas Morgul. Then we did the. Uh, then the Argonaut last night. That's right. Uh, it's, uh, it's like, I don't think it's been three weeks that we've been doing the ornaments, but no, we did one last night. Uh, so Spitfire Minches, again, hope uh, hope that you're having a fantastic Friday slash Saturday there. We still have ourselves almost three hours of Saturday over here. I'm going to continue with this uh, 
lighter green here, maybe a little bit more of the... That is our phthalo green, but remember we are using uh, some alkyd type stuff here. Maybe this gets a little bit of the Prussian blue into it, maybe. See how that goes. Probably could have gone with maybe less thinner here, but the surface is relatively rough, so it makes it a little bit easier to get that stuff in there. You know, I might actually put a little bit of the green down here too, because reasons. So that was it was really fun painting uh, the Shire ornament, uh, and of course our where's our Minas Morgul? Come on, where did you head off to? You were around, ah, there you are. There's our, there's our Minas Morgul ornament. So yeah, we've done three of these so far. Where's, ah. Yeah, let's just get some more of our green down in there too. What the heck. It's just a pre-glaze anyhow. Hey there, cutie patooties. Uh, so cutie patootie. Uh, it will depend. Now, you know, certain colors will cure at a faster rate. The the reds take longer, and as we have now learned, you know, Egyptian violet that can also, and uh, Indian yellow, especially the Williamsburg, those can take a wee while to cure. Uh, I don't usually seal anything because the oils are so robust. Not really a need to do that, but if there is a little bit of shiny, and again the. Uh, these alkyd type colors can sometimes have a bit of a shininess to them. I just gently brush on a little bit of this here. So this is the Army Painter Anti Shine. This is, I use this for my acrylics too. Nice thing is I just do this indoors, right? I don't have to worry about the being outside or something. Don't need any spray boost for it or anything like that. Hey there, Chris. Boy, it's been a while. Great to see you back. Now, Chris, if you wanted to share your links or anything like that in the chat, again, it's it's been a while. That would be fantastic. So, yeah, cutie patootie. That's all I use, just the Army Painter Anti-Shine. Uh, and, and, of course, Spitfire Maze, if you wanted to share anything there in the chat, that would be, that'd be marvelous, too. But, yeah, Chris, great to see you back. Sorry that the streams have been at really weird times. It's just been... Things have not gone according to plan, that's for sure. Not at all. Uh, well, Chris, uh, <laughs> I, I can t completely identify with that. So I very much understand. Sorry that uh, you've been having this, the streak of Mondays, too. But yes, it has been pretty much non-stop Monday here for months. Yep, yeah, this, boy, Chris, that's a weird commonality in the timeline right there but very much the same same kind of thing going on here so sorry that uh, that's been troublesome there and kind of keeping you away from all your projects well Chris if you wanted to post some of your other stuff it doesn't have to be anything brand new if you wanted to post some of your older stuff since well obviously we want to show off all the stuff painted with the oils hey there Megan Sorry, I meant to give you a heads up. I kind of I forgot. I was like typing messages and stuff, and I of course forgot to say, "Hey, I'm gonna try to go live here." Everybody, please give Megan Paints a follow as well. So yeah, Megan, it's just been another one of those kind of crazy days here. Just literally trying to move stuff around. That's all I've been doing for like the last nine and a half hours or something. So yeah, Chris here's hoping that uh, you kind of get that back to more of a normal type thing and you can get back into your regular painting routine, of course. And I'm going to get me a little bit more of the darker greens down here just because we might change that, but for now, let's just go with this. I think that that might be better for the just for the moment here. Now, uh, boy, you can see that this stuff's already kind of set up here, but it's been a long time since we used makeup sponges. 
Mega Sponge Time there. Hey there, Pun Expected. How you doing? And, uh, well, Alabama, they won. So down goes, uh, down go the dogs. And we'll see what happens tonight. So, Val Fair, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, let me see. One, one second here. One second. So everybody, please check out the Discord link there that Pawn Expected Painting posted. Uh, well, Hornspan, uh, I'm pretty sure. I think it's is it 17 nothing in in Indianapolis. I uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, again, I don't know what it is right now, but I know it's 3-3 in in the other game of interest. So everybody again, please check out the Discord link that Unexpected Painting posted. So nice to see you there, Tech Knight. I hope that you're doing well. Happy Saturday to you. And uh, Val Fear, if you wanted to post the, the links to the dragon and such, as as usual, that'd be fabulous. That'd be fantastic. Ah, there it is. And there was another one of those sitting around somewhere. Uh, so Horns fan, this is a 3D print from Clay Cyanide. No idea what the name of it is. All I know is that there is a bust version of it. There's a bust version, and then there's this one. And I'm pretty sure this is from Clay Cyanide. All right, and we're just going to do it again. With, uh, there we go. See Clay Cyanide there. All right, now I think we've got our... We've got our pre-glaze down here. How's about some lighter stuff over the top of it? And yeah, let's get some yellow into this here. That will be also some of our fast matte colors there. Because, well, you got the, the Knowles down to third string quarterback, and it very much looks like a third string quarterback there. All right, and of course, uh, Iowa's going to live up to their usual over under, probably. Because that's what Iowa does. There we go. So, getting a little bit of that uh, spicy. Lighter green on the feathers, real quick here. Hey there, Blades, how you doing? Oh boy, Blades, thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Everybody, please give Blades 81 a follow as well. Well, it's, it is 3-3. It is 3-3 now. And there we go. Okay, so you're just uh, putting some of this here lighter green into a few areas. Maybe, maybe we'll hit the uh, feathers on the feet here. Ah, thanks, Blades. Uh, well, you can't go wrong with the hot chocolates, right? Can't go wrong with that. I think it's going to be time to start breaking out the... I'm going to get a little further with this. Uh, I think it's time to start breaking out the rum chata to put in there. So everybody, please check out the Instagram link that Valfira posted. So we'll get Valfira. I hope that you had a, a decent Saturday there. Now, sorry, I didn't get a chance to send you pictures. Uh, there wasn't really a whole bunch from today. It was all very ugly. I was just literally moving stuff around. Uh, th this was more about just creating space for if they actually do try to build a garage on Monday, Tuesday, whatever. So yeah, nothing, uh, nothing terribly spectacular, unfortunately. So yeah, blades. Uh, that's that's what'll uh, that's what'll go. And actually, to the other thing too. Oh, what's that? Uh, cream de mint. That's another thing that. Uh, would be interesting 
in uh, well okay that's gonna change well blades I really do appreciate that I really do appreciate that uh, been trying to set up Christmassy type stuff here trying to make sure that 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 still happens I was hoping to have that holiday cheers, you know, the, the basement set up enough to where I could actually have that down there too, but, well, uh, with with all the craziness with the car stuff, the garage, that, that's kind of uh, messed with those plans just a bit. So, Horns fan, much appreciated. And again, I mean, eh, let's see, uh, obviously, actually, a uh, Horns fan... Listening to a lot of folks, you they, they almost don't care if Florida State wins. There's a lot of them that just say, well, okay, what are the four best teams? Well, they don't count because they don't have a quarterback. So, Hornsman, it could be it could be tricky. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe by the Monday stream, thing things could be very different. Oh, let me see if I can't get a little bit more of that lighter green down in there. All right. So, I mean, it's happening quick, right? It happens. So don't blink. Don't blink. So it says the weeping angel. He's like, oh, yeah, you're the one that uh, has no eyelids, huh? He's like, yeah, you try sleeping like this. Not so well. So there's, there's the weeping angel for you. Uh, actually, wow, Horns fan, uh, that's quite the offensive explosion because the only last time I they they only had like thirty. So yeah, they've really uh, they've exploded for some points there, as far as yards. <laughs> uh, not quite sure how that all got out there, but there's a bunch of thinner all over the place there now. Let me just. Uh, try doing something a little bit like this here I'm gonna move this we're gonna put these on top of this and then try and do this and get rid of some of that all that juicy stuff there all right maybe that did the trick uh, well horns fan uh, playing in the uh, Big Ten West now it doesn't hurt <laughs> Yeah, being in the Big Ten West is one one handy way to get to ten wins. Not so much in the East. Now this has a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue in it. We're looking to do a little something different here. Eh, maybe that was too late, but I can always uh, come back. Do a little bit of a glazy type thing over that as well. Yeah, let's do some more of this here. And then, of course, we'll have to do all that free handy stuff. All of the little spots on the wings and everything. All right, a little bit more of our... Maybe that should have more green to it. I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll see how this goes. We shall see how this goes. Ah, oh, there's more feathers over here, too. Okay, well, uh, it's been a long time since I looked at the sculpt. I was going to try to have that tree man all ready to go, and apparently there's just a piece missing. Because I went to put it together, and I said, there's there's one critical component to this thing that I don't have, because I can't put this together with only the pieces that I have printed out. So we'll have to... Uh, not quite sure how we'll get that set up again, but... Not to, you know we'll try and maybe do a little bit of a gold there or something perhaps. Yeah, let's get a little bit more of the light over here, and then we'll uh, come out with a little bit of the Prussian. Oof, okay, a little bit. That's a lot of it right there. We just wanted a, a smidge of that. Uh, oh, great grimoire. I wonder if this is 
This can't be great grim. Oh, this could be great grimoire. If it is, my apologies. Ah, oh, this could actually be great grimoire. So sorry. Hey, Gigabyte, how you doing? Uh, well, Juno Munjo uh, is hoping that you get a chance to get that going again, and you, well, you got to find some really fun things to work on, right? That that always is kind of a key. As long as it's uh, something really fun, really kind of captures your interest, much easier to kind of get back into it that way. Thanks, Horns fan. Appreciate that. Yeah, they're, uh, I just, I wish I could find the Shire ones so that we have all kind of three of them together there. But yeah, uh, Valfira, there's definitely, there, there's a bunch, of, not, not just Middle Earth ones, there's things for Patreon vids and such that could be very, very interesting for sure. Okay, here, let me hit this again a little bit just to, and now maybe we'll start to come in with some of our lighter tones. I'm just going to use this part as a bit of a blending brush right here. Uh, okay, so, well, thanks. Uh, actually, I have, do I have the Great Grimoire logo? Well, I can definitely get this out of the way here, and then we won't be... Uh, We'll just do that. Now, let me see if I actually have a great Grimoire logo. I don't think I do, but if I do, we'll, we'll try and bring that up here. So, not seeing it there, not seeing it there. Nope, so I don't have that logo, but thanks, uh, thanks, Valfara. Yeah, this this could be, a, this could actually be a great Grimoire right here. So, that, that's, I'm just going to leave it... Uh, somewhat unnamed so it could be one or the other it could be great grimoire it could be clay cyanide uh, i'm actually starting to lead more towards uh, great grimoire unfortunately the the people that would know for sure right away they're they're not in the stream sadly otherwise yeah they could kind of tell us straight away it's like yeah that is that is definitely from great grimoire so, Valfira, is it going to be well, obviously something you'll probably print out very large, too? All right, let's do this here. I've, uh, who knows, maybe Monday I might be... Uh, we might be painting some f uh, nativity-style figures by Monday. It all kind of depends. Uh, I just, I don't think I'll be able to get very much, well, also, too, Monday is supposed to be the garage, so, uh, if I'm able to stream on Monday, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes again, because they're gonna, they're supposed to be here at 6.30 in the morning, and given the fact that that's usually the time that I'm actually getting to sleep, that could make things very, uh, interesting, to say the least. Okay, so it is by Great Grimoire. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, uh, Valfira. So we'll, we'll... Fortunately, we got rid of the clay cyanide thing, and now that's all better. So thank you so much for correcting the info there. Going a little bit more towards the blue. Okay, and now should I try and go later here? Maybe first though, here, let me get some more of the Prussian blue out here. Okay. You know, maybe I'm going to let that set. We're actually going to maybe do some darker glazy things on these leaves. Uh, the, the feathers here. Let me do that now. Oh, that's right, Val. You know, Valfair, I haven't, uh, haven't really had a chance to look too much at ornaments and stuff. I, I, I haven't even looked at a lot of the December releases yet, so not, not quite sure what uh, folks. I know Highland Miniatures did a whole bunch of really interesting Christmas ornaments, and we actually did paint some of those on stream.
Uh, there is that that hobbit hole ornament that I put. Maybe we'll paint that. I don't know. Yeah, actually, because that's all that's all ready to go. So just don't be surprised if there's a whole bunch of ornaments and stuff here on stream because well, with the, again with the garage stuff, that's going to disrupt a lot of prepping and other things. So I might just need stuff that needs next to no prep for uh, for at least another week here. All right, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to get some of this darker stuff going on the on the wings here. Uh, okay, same over here on the feathers. I was going to try and get that qua here and Radagast figure ready to go, but that thing is so gigantic. I would have had to change way too much with the cameras and everything else, so I said, no, we're not doing that. So boy, it's uh, it's been a long time since I last painted a great grimoire piece there. They they do some very neat stuff, and then they certainly have. So uh, there's a lot in each release, wouldn't you say, there, Valfira? Okay, we'll continue with our. There, so yeah, Horns fan, uh, just uh, the way this is going, even if Florida State wins, you might still see Texas out there. Oh boy, Valfair, you just reminded me, White Wolf Tavern. That was, they're the ones that I think have a Radagast in their December release. I think it's White Wolf Tavern. Remember, I couldn't think of what it was last night or the night before I think that's what it is uh, yeah Valfira actually we I have a couple of the White Wolf Tavern but I don't do the White Wolf Tavern Patreon thing but I do try to the snag files that could work very well for things like uh, all like some of the busts or whatever, some of our different uh, Patreon videos. Uh, so Spitfire Miniatures Games Workshop does have an old metal Tom Bombadil. I'm pretty sure that Printing Goes Ever On and their starter set did a Tom Bombadil. I don't think that RNA Studios did, and I don't think that Diwali or Kurz look or even Medbury have one, but I'm pretty sure that the printing goes ever on. They did, uh, he has a Tom Bombadil. I don't know if he has a gold berry or not, but, uh, but GW does have a very old uh, Tom Bombadil and gold berry uh, set. And that, that'll, that's going to go back a long, long ways. That, that'll go back to basically about 2000 which I think yeah even uh, this this old metal Gandalf figure that goes back about 23 years right there do we ah uh, yeah we gotta get a little more dark in there as well So yeah, Spitfire Miniatures, you have Nerd of the Rings, you have the Broken Sword, you have Men of the West, you have In Deep Geek, and there's a, there's a couple other ones. There's a, there's a few of them. And, uh, well, we often cite their stuff uh, as part of our silly Merillion that we do. I think, uh, well... Is it Men of the West or is it Broken Sword? Basically, they'll do things like movie Denethor versus book Denethor. And obviously, they'll cover characters like Imrahil 
and such that aren't in the movies because well we we love our Prince Imre Hill where where is he where is Prince Imre Hill there he is there's Prince Imre Hill fabulous leading the fiefdoms we actually painted a pretty sizable fiefdoms army so far There is actually a thousand points of it. Now again, I'm just kind of putting some of the uh, darker shadow stuff in here for the time being. What else do we have going on here? More of our dark? Yeah, let's do some more of that. Now I gotta get these wings up here. Yeah, looking to get some of the darker stuff. And it won't be all that different. Where is our, uh, oh, that's right, uh, that new guy here that I painted, that is, uh, that's actually in a case right now. It's kind of funny, Horns fan, uh, They've cut to about four people so far, wearing uh, wearing Auburn in the uh, in the stands there. So a bunch of Texas fans that are, uh, shall we say, hanging on the uh, the result here. They're actually there in the stadium. Uh, yep, we'll keep going with their dark here. Then we'll have to start thinking about some of our freehandy type stuff. Although I think I'm going to probably still add some, some lights before we do that. It is, uh, it's only been 35 minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah, Valfira, I think that that's it. There's There was a dragon as part of the release. But there was also something that looked a lot like a Radagast type of a figure there. Although I might already, I do have one, not just on Guahir, but also a, uh, also have one on foot. That, yeah, well, let's just keep going with this. And then, like I said, we'll get into some of our, some of our lighter green here, too. But I want this to set, so I'm going to, I'll do this here. Then we'll go back to our blue, because we've allowed that to set as well. So, yeah, with this uh, particular quarterback situation, again, I, I just, uh, the committee has to decide. Are they going to go on things like resumes? Or are they going by what they actually think is the best team at the moment? Or the best four at the moment? It's just kind of weird, uh, Horns fan, that uh, this, this is sort of the last day. And of course, uh, it's the last day of normalcy. It was really weird, you know, on the the Alabama broadcast there, where they said for the last time the SEC on CBS. That was very, that was weird to see. I have to say. I mean that that's something that's kind of been a fixture for a very long time. Yeah, as if they're they're P five conferences, right? And and uh, I believe no, well, undefeated P five champ has ever been not selected. So that's can't that does make things a little bit uh, more difficult. All right, there we go. We gotta get some more dark down in there. And we'll 
that was uh, no, 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 no. Let's wait to get to that lighter green. But now let let's see what we can do here with maybe this and some of the Prussian blue here. So, yeah, Horns fan, uh, the. Uh, there, I guess there was all kinds of transfer transfer portal madness and lots of decommitting from from the buffs. I, I'm sure you're shocked at that that a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of people will be decommitting from them. It wasn't just kind of the losing; it was all the other stuff that kind of uh, leaked out there. And well, that's right. And Colorado went to the uh, to the Big Twelve there. Now, oh, what do we got going on here? We need to get some of this uh, lighter blue here, because all we have is just the only light there is the light that we uh, took away with the makeup sponge. So, pun expected. Again, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, this this will definitely start making a difference here, getting some of the lighter stuff in. This is still very much a mid-tone. She was almost almost a dark mid-tone at that. We can certainly come back much lighter here. Where is... Let me uh, get some of the paint off of this brush here. And we'll try and use this as a bit more of a blending brush here. Like that. Hey there, Queez and Nurgle Matthew. Great to see you. So, uh, Queez, I'm guessing that you probably didn't get a chance to play a game today. I wasn't, wasn't sure if you did. I know that... Uh, you know, with everybody being sick there, that kind of took away the opportunity, and I'm pretty sure that maybe this was supposed to be the weekend that you were able to do that. Ah, uh, sorry you weren't able to get in a game today there, Queez. But Nurgle Matthew, thank you so much. Happy Saturday to you. And for those uh, still alive in the college playoffs, well... Congratulations for those in certain parts of the country where the door kind of slammed shut on those. Well, <laughs> next year should be very interesting. With uh, 45 teams in the playoff, one conference with 6,000 teams in it, I'll have to start playing bowl games in October just to be able to get through everything. What could possibly go wrong? So again, we will be uh, we'll be getting lighter here, but right now I'm just trying to do some of this mid-tone stuff. We'll have to try and find maybe some areas too where the uh, Where that green can go further on the arms. Yeah, just looking to lighten these things, these areas up here. Yeah, I would like to get some kind of gold or something there on that helmet. Still got to get the lighter green on. The, the knee here and such, I think. And I guess the uh, quiz, uh, is it pretty much more the Smurfs that are that you're playing right now, or are you also playing, kind of going back and forth between them and your Nurgle army? I'm going to try to get a little bit of the blue onto these feather just a little hint of it there like that uh, yeah 
Yeah, I'm going to get a little more blue out on this thing too, maybe. Out onto these, uh, well, the upper wings, I guess. Uh, now, Kwees, are they, are they some of the newer zombie side figs, or are they some of like the really old ones from the original zombie side there? It, it's been a long time since I painted those. Yeah, there's a, I, again, I remember what they all were. I, I remember there was the original one. There was like a shopping mall one or something. Uh, again, I, I, it's been a long time, so I don't remember what all the different iterations were of Zombie Side. Let me get a little more. Yeah, yeah, we got to keep going with the light here. Hey, Arda Michael, happy Saturday to you. Uh, so th that's not Rue Morgue, that is uh, Black Plague. Yeah, I think that's Black Plague there, Quiz. So yeah, not the original one. Hey there, Zach, how you doing? So yeah, that must be the, the Black Plague one then. Yeah, I don't think I've ever even seen, yeah, I don't think I've ever even seen those figures. Uh, so Artemiko, hopefully the, uh, the tank fest was very fun. It was, it was like, uh, it was like you brought Bovington to uh, Connecticut there or something. Now, oh, Zach, glad that you could be at the paint club and uh, enjoy some painting and hanging out. Again, that is something that I do look forward to when, when all of this madness is over with. With the vehicle and the garages, just trying to do some hangouts or something. Let me see if I can get a little bit more of the, yeah, let's see if we can go a little lighter now on this. Ooh, wait, let's do the neck first. Let's do that first, and we haven't really done a bunch up here either. Uh, so Arda Michael, uh, I guess, what was the thing that everybody kind of looked at and said, oh, we all have to kill that? Was it the mouse? Because you had the, uh, you had the tiger, no, then you had the Yag Tiger, right, Arda Michael? All 75 tons of it. That might be a little lighter. I'm going to maybe cut down a little bit on that. Not too much thinner either. Ah, so everybody was going after the mouse. Well, huh. Arda Michael, it's kind of hard to hide that behind anything, right? Uh, was it was it kind of like what I was thinking that you know a lot of the big nasty vehicles would just get pinned to within an inch of their life, not not destroyed or anything, but they would just get a collection of pin markers on them. So glad, glad that you were able to do that there, Arda Michael, and have some fun. Boy, I gotta get me around that that arm somehow there. You also need to get some more of this uh, lighter stuff in here too. There's an awful lot of the darker colors. I also need me a smaller blending brush. There we are. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I could see that. Uh, I could definitely see that drawing a wee bit of attention there, Arta Michael. For sure. Alright, so we'll just uh, kind of keep going with the blue here. That That's going to allow the green to set a bit more. And then we'll, we'll lighten that up. And then we'll uh, think about whatever sort of free handy thing we're going to do with all the little peacock spots and such on it. Hey, let's get some more of the light here on these feathers down into there. You know what? Maybe uh, we'll just try and do some kind of a warmer greenish eye here or something. All right, let me take this down a little, a little thinner. Ah, that's great, Gauze. That's fantastic. Let's see if we can do something here for some eyes. Again, uh, and nowhere near the metal ferrule of that brush. You know what? I'm going to go here. Let's also uh, change this more towards some kind of a gold ish type of a thing here. And then also here. Yeah, let's do some more of that. Yeah, hell again, sorry that that just keeps, uh, that keeps acting up there. I know that makes it really difficult to do any kind of painting, for sure. So, uh, sorry again to hear about that. Uh, and it's sorry that the anodyne uh, wasn't really a, a possible solution there. Uh, so Red Baron, this is from Great Grimoire. It's a 3D print, and I think it's uh, what's called the Avian Princess, uh, right, uh, Valfera? So Valfera, thanks again for looking that up. That is very helpful and appreciated. And oh, look at that, look at that. There you go, Valfira has uh, been even more helpful and has actually posted the link to the My Mini Factory Great Grimoire uh, page there. And then get me some more of my yellow here. So let's do more kind of a gold-ish. Maybe we'll start to lighten this up. We'll eventually get even more of the uh, fast mat white into that. Yeah, hell again, again, sorry that it's kind of a up and down sort of a thing for you. Ooh, let me see if I can get some of that here. And then we'll go with our much lighter light. This is also going to contrast with all of the, the blues there. So that it's not just a value contrast, it will give us also a color contrast. All right, so there we go. There's some of our fast matte white mixing in with the yellow here. Like so. Let's get some of the light right up here on the top of this. Like so. Same over there. A little bit uh, difficult to reach because we don't want to be sticking our hands on that here. I might actually also take the uh, blending brush to some of this. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. So Grand Org, I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't remember what Kurzluck is doing for this month. Uh, actually, uh, Grand Oracle, you wouldn't happen to remember which month uh, Kurzluck did their Watcher in the Water. I know I printed one out. And I, I know I, I printed out the Watcher in the Water from Printing Goes Ever On, but I think uh, I, I should probably print those again using the uh, well, using the any uh, the any cubic printer with the version two gray resin. I just I don't remember that. Now, that was a while ago when Kurzluck did the Watcher in the Water. And for printing goes ever on, that was even further back in time. All right, I'm just going to try and use that wing since we haven't really done a whole bunch on that. Let me throw some light on this again, and then something over here. We have almost no light, reflected light, whatever, on this side. I know that might be difficult for you to see. Uh, so Red Baron, it's a... Uh, you can control, you, you have a couple of controls over color contrast. And one of those is, it's not value, but it's actually the saturation. So obviously here, the, these greens are a saturated, warm color. But also here, even on the blues, those are, that's a relatively saturated blue color. And But here, so here we've got kind of desaturated cool colors, but we have... Uh, also desaturated warm colors so there there's a contrast between the warm and the cool but it's not super intense because these are not really intense type colors now where that is maybe a little bit different would be say something well like this here where we have the intense blues but then all of these warmer colors those are really dingy and kind of grayed down so that's probably your best bet That's probably your best bet for trying to control that particular form of contrast, which is a very valuable form of contrast, of course. Now we need to get a little uh, gold-ish color on these. We'll do more in a bit. Now I'm going to start getting me some of the... Uh, more in, and now here we'll be doing the intense, more intense green color. I'm also going to get, where's my, we'll be doing this uh, fast matte color here. That's that Hansa yellow. I mean, we could just take the Indian yellow and mix it with the, with the white there. We could also, well, use was brilliant yellow pale, but we are trying to get things to dry somewhat faster here. I'm going to chuck this over here. We're going to grab some of our thalo green and some of that, and that's going to make a very intense green there. We're just going to let that kind of break down in there. Aaron Blade, boy, nice to see you. It's been a while. Sorry that the streams have been kind of weird starts there, Aaron Blade. So Aaron Blade, I hope that uh, things have been going well. I, I don't know if you've been able to maybe uh, kind of keep going with some of your some of the projects that you've uh, wanted to do painting wise. Hopefully you have. So hopefully that's a, a lighter green there. Now uh, well, Aaron Blade, you could check out. Uh, uh, we painted uh, Guajir. Just uh, not too many streams ago, so you could go and check out that uh, session there. The key is to definitely get some color variety. You don't want to just have, well, you know, slightly lighter brown or lighter tan or something like that. 
And even here, see, we got some blue in the wings. There's green. So even at something like this, we're still uh, trying to make sure that there is a color variety there. Even in the, some of these greens, you might have warmer greens and cooler greens. Now, glad that you're doing well there, Aaron Blade. Again, we're, now we're going to start uh, some of the same stuff that we were doing on the blue. Now we're going to start doing that on the green. Oh, and by the way, one hour and 22 minutes ago, this had no paint on it. It was uh, just primer and nothing else. Uh, see, see you in a bit there, Aaron Blade. So yeah, we're going to just try and get some of this lighter, very warm green. Uh, no, we're going to have to take some of that away. There's a, there's a wee bit of thinner that, that got into this paint here. A little more than what I had intended. That's, that's okay. We'll just we'll work with it. We'll deal with it. But I want to get some of that green out here. There's a lot of the blue. Okay, more of that over here. And I might even, uh, I don't know, maybe take some of the phthalo green or whatever. Might even uh, just try to tint some of that a little bit, uh, again, more towards the green. All right, I'll get a little bit more of my lighter green up there. Okay, we're getting there. We have to do the wings up there, too. And then, obviously, we'll go lighter than this. Then we have to do our little patterns on there as well. This feather also needs some of our more intense green here. Like this. And actually, uh, Horns fan, was it one of the touchdowns, uh, a, uh, a punt return? I could swear one of those was a punt return. Uh, so there you go. Actually, the only game that I thought was going to be potentially wild and give us interest was the, was the one. That was the Alabama game. Having seen Louisville, I thought, eh, they are not that spectacular. And even somebody like a Florida State with a third-string quarterback should still be able to beat them. And there we are. We'll get some of this lighter stuff on the inside of the wings as well. Let's see if we can do that. So yeah, it's uh, it's really weird to think that that is pretty much the end of the season there. We were, we were just getting warmed up on the college football report here. What do we got going on? And let's keep going with that lighter green here. Again, that's got some intensity to it. Some of that up on the ends of these feathers here. Oh, and by the way, this is still only 94 minutes. Uh, so Elite, I think that, uh, I guess the line was going to, uh, to San Francisco. No, is it going to the Eagles? I, th I thought it was going to the Eagles. I guess maybe it depends where it's being played, and uh, is that a is that a three o'clock start or is that the the Sunday night game? Okay.
Okay, let me see. Okay, this is going to be interesting. We're going to have to utilize all aspects of our liner brush here for sure and again look where we're holding that brush just uh, two two fingers on it as well just those two fingers now so how again again uh, I really did enjoy those uh, those sculpts that you did those were really fantastic Uh, again, I, I, I know you would love to be able to to do to do those. Let me see if I can do this one second here. Do we need to get some more of our lighter green on the other side of that possibly? All right, we're just going to kill that, get this thing out of our way here. Still working with this lighter green, and then we'll go even lighter. And uh, one of the things that we have definitely revealed with the with those uh, alkyd paints, they definitely they dry quicker. I mean, that's you would expect that, but they set much quicker too, which which makes a difference when you're working with colors of violet, red, some of those other ones that can be a little persnickety when you're trying to work with those wet into wet. And also that they have a bit of a shine to them. But then that's what the Army Painter Anti-Shine is all about. That can help uh, counteract some of that shininess. You know, I will, yes, I will put the lighter green on these feathers here. We kind of set it up with our... Uh, Prussian blue mix and even a little bit of the thalo green in there too and now we're we go over the top of that that gets to be an, a little bit uh, brighter there so yeah what are the, oh, the brotherly shove that's uh, that's what they call it there But I think one of the reasons why they're adept at running that would, would also happen to involve Jalen Hurts because, well, he kind of did stuff like that at Bama. He was, he was more of a power runner, that's for sure. And well, when you have a quarterback that can do stuff like that, that makes that play pretty effective. again just getting that that yellowish green out here to the feathers coming out of this oh yeah those we need to do a little something over there and then we still have to do these feathers on the top wings like so now, of course, uh, this was one of the last things that I printed out on the old uh, Sonic Mini 4K. Uh, I'm sure we could definitely get a much better print out of the uh, Mono X with the gray version 2 resin. So that is uh, one of the things I've got to do after the stream is kind of get the get the printers going and such. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's just keep doing these feathers here. 
can and the side too. All right. Come on, there we are. Let's bring in a little more of this. It's all the shading it just all was set up by those initial that the pre glaze then doing some of that dry brushy stuff then we came back in and remember we did some almost a little bit of pin line wash type of action and some of the shadows there boy oh boy cam Newton, that uh that gets me thinking of Auburn in some of those uh, some of those crazy Iron Bowl games. And that's to the lighter green on these feathers as we move our way up here, because that is going to also help that little little freehandy type design to stand out a little bit more if we've got this brighter green on the lee on the feathers sorry i've been painting so many tree men just have feathers on the brain i guess i'm a feather brain there oh, look at that this here can some more of our light On that, so I, th I think I saw the the Thursday night uh, game should not be terribly intriguing. There's been actually a few of those that have been somewhat interesting this year. That's been a surprise. Uh, yeah, this is not the lightest of our green. We will still go a little lighter than this. Oh, boy, oh, boy. To figure out what we're doing with the feathers on this side now and also the, uh, the skin that's not skin. We will get some more of our green out onto that. Throw some of that over here. Oh yeah, that's right. That uh, the the Dallas Seahawks game that was a little bit more spicy than uh, certainly than I thought it was going to be. Ah, wait a minute. Okay, look. At, look at my hand is on that brush. It is completely at the virtual end of the brush there. We talk about that all the time. Ah, so Artemiko uh, had a bald eagle steering him down there. Actually, Artemiko, you sure it wasn't Guajir? Who is thinking that you might want to jump on him too and go for a little little ride around Arda or something like that? So maybe uh, maybe that's why that eagle was uh, not looking too uh, happy with you. Actually, speaking of birds, I have to make a couple of stands or several stands of Creebane for my Dunlending army. So sorry, this should be interesting now that we have all this value on here. Yeah, we got lots of value now. So this should be very interesting when we do this. Zoink. Ah, yeah, I mean, okay. Yes, we have the shading there, but this is what we mean about the contrast. Right, look at the color contrast that's about to emerge. Right there. And remember, we had two basically intense colors here. The blues are relatively intense. 
And these greens are very intense. They're actually about to get a little bit more intense even. So, yeah, 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 let's see if we can still get a little bit of the, uh, whoops, that wasn't supposed to go there. Let's get a smidge more of this wider green down there. Also, uh, in here, just a, a touch, too. Not a ton of it. And it's almost like we're doing a little bit of a dry brush, even with this tiny little liner brush here. And we'll lighten up a couple of these feathers. The edge, eh, the edge of it there. Come on, there we are. So yeah, sorry I didn't get a chance to paint the... Uh, the qua here with Radagast, but that is that was much bigger than I thought it was, and I would have had to change all of the setup stuff around here, and there was no time for doing that. There wasn't even time for prepping it, so I quickly uh, quickly abandoned that and just grabbed this thing. Basically, I was either gonna do this as the stream or as a video, and the bust as the stream, but I'll just paint the bust as the stream based on these colors here or as a video sorry and then obviously here see what we can do with this as a stream get a little bit more of that lighter green going right there Yeah, Grand Oracle, it's not like the acrylics, which, I mean, geez, uh, especially when there was both Kathy and I painting there, you could always tell when there was an oops, because there would be that furious, you could hear that tinkling of the uh, of the paint water there, and, and somebody was going to try and wipe away whatever boo-boo just happened. But we don't have to be rushing around like that, do we? We don't have to be hasty. All right, let me see if I can go... Another stage lighter here with that green. It's going to break out some more thinner here. Let's just break this down again. We're getting some of the maybe the lightest highlights here on those feathers. Uh, not so much down in there, though, but more out here on the edges. Like so. I do hope to get those... Uh, oh, oh, yeah, the uh, Galadrim Elves prepped. I, I Well, there was no time to do it. Also, I knew there was no way I was going to be able to that the streams this weekend were either going to be interrupted or, well, obviously, that next week. So, yeah, not sure what's going on for the Monday stream. It kind of depends, well, A, when they get out of here, and B, if I get any actual sleep, because I'll probably have to be up all night on Sunday. Yeah, well, this this feather for sure really got to hit this one with our light. Yeah, Grant Oracle, uh, boy, oh boy, I, I actually used more of the Vallejo game color than I did the Vallejo paint only because way back in the day when Adepticon's paint contests were the uh, rogue demons, and what they actually, they gave prize support. It wasn't money or whatever. It was just, well, things like epoxy sculpt, green stuff, actual hobby supplies. To me, those were fabulous prizes. I actually, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I started using epoxy sculpt is because they gave us a bunch of it. Again, as prize support, I didn't know what the heck it was. And just because we had it, I tried it, and I really did enjoy that stuff.
there it's a uh, the the game colors are definitely i guess you could say they're more like the wintons i, I guess that's what they're supposed to be of that uh, particular line all right so you see we're getting our, our lighter greens in here now especially on the the backs of the wings here and the upper surfaces too here let's get some more of this on the head so again this is uh, from great grimoire here a 3d print and uh, this is Mount one of the, the loot studios plants right here now I might after we do the the birdie part maybe we'll just try and give it that same sort of a wood finish right there Did I already get the... Yeah, I think I did get the lightest green over there. It's, uh, it's very different from this where there was, just a lot, there was a lot of the blue, but much more in the way of muted colors and such. I mean, just way more muted colors on that, on that uh, painting last night. See if I can get some of this lighter green on this too. Yeah, like that. So say we all. Thank you so much, Beef. Appreciate that. Much appreciated. I hope that your Saturday went well. That's going all the way back to the beginning there. So beef in the hole again. I hope that you're doing really well. And actually beef in the hole if you wanted to share anything that you've been working on over the last month or so, whatever, that'd be fantastic. So beef in the hole again. I hope that uh, you had yourself a fabulous weekend here so far. And here's hoping that you enjoy Sunday, too. I don't, wait a minute, let me move this thing more out of my way there, okay. So beef in the hole, we've been painting, uh, we've already painted three Christmas ornaments. Mostly, well, with all the craziness that's been going on here over the last two months, so... Uh, Prepping stuff is very difficult, so these are much easier to prep because they're just a piece of wood. So we've been doing that. So beef in the hole again. If you wanted to share anything that you've been working on in the chat there, that'd be uh, fantastic. I'm going to try and get me some of the latest green right there on these uh, feathers. Again, look where my hand is on that brush. Uh, thanks, Beef. Appreciate that. I'll have to... Uh, well, now that we actually have a genuine Christmas tree set up, I'll have to take some glory shots with it on the actual Christmas tree. Didn't really get to do that with the other ornaments. All right, here, let me get some of that lightest green up top here. So, Beef, what kind of stuff have you been working on uh, the, the last couple of months there? Well, hopefully you have been. I know for a lot of folks, uh, life has just been a little bit active and making that a little bit uh, trickier. get a little more of the maybe lighter green out there too and uh, beef in the hole the uh, that that vehicle was very interesting to paint with all the crazy uh, freehand on that not sure if you've seen the the video on that yet 
just uh, tossed that out earlier today. Boy, oh boy. I was tempted to carry that lighter yellowish green a little bit further down in the interior, but I don't think we'll do that. I think we'll leave it where it's at here. Hey there, cat lady. Great to see you again. So, cat lady, it's been a, been an interesting day of college football. It's also basically the last day. I mean, obviously we we have some bowl games and we have the playoffs and stuff. It's just kind of weird that well, that's that's it for Saturdays now. I hope everybody's doing well. They're speaking of cats. And uh, sorry, I haven't had a chance to give you guys. But I was gonna try and maybe do that tomorrow. Uh, because the garage that was they were supposed to start building that on Thursday. Then at the last minute they said no. And uh, with all the stuff that I had to move just to facilitate that. Uh, that's all I've been doing, like today, was moving furniture for, oh, at least nine, nine and a half hours or so. Yeah, the, uh, of course, Iowa managed to hit the under again, not quite in the way that they had envisioned. But yes, they still managed to hit the under, which I guess is a surprise to nobody. It, is, it would have been interesting, I mean, if somehow you had Oregon, Bama, Hawkeyes, and Cardinals win all those games. I just, uh, that would have been interesting to see what the tomorrow would be. Well, tomorrow's still going to be interesting. So again, sorry that none of the results worked out for you. I actually thought, I actually thought that uh, you're that you were going to have some magic in the Iron Bowl. Even then, I thought, okay, well, actually, if this works out this way, and then Alabama wins that game, that opens up things at that five, six, seven stuff. I didn't expect on 4th and 31 for that to work out quite that way. Now, I guess that they're going to stick with uh, Ryan Day, right, uh, right, Cat Lady? I mean, even though you got a 40 on one side and a 3 on the other. You know what? I'm also going to do this. So I just had a little bit of the thalo green. That, that cools that down. Here, let me get a little bit more of the fast matte white in there. Now I've got to break this down again. Got to break this down some more. So Denethor, the, uh, now that it's December, looking forward, we're all eagerly awaiting the Hobbit release from uh, Printing Goes Ever On. So let me just start doing some ovals here, just because. Maybe we need to get a little more thinner into that. I don't know. That could be too much. Let me break this down a little. And uh, we'll see how this translates here. We're going to just do, uh, we'll do these. Right, and uh, we want to let this have a chance to set. So we'll see uh, how rapidly we do the uh, the ones on the front of the wings too. Again, those uh, it could take a little <laughs> fudging there to get those to work exactly the way we might want them to. 
And again, maybe some of these we just give the impression that that is here. There's another one over there. Uh, yeah, Denethor, I'm, I'm very curious to see what the Diwali Fell Beast is going to look like. Because I don't think they've ever done a Fell Beast. Now, of course, <laughs> I have, much like the Tree Men now, I have all the Fell Beasts. I, I have the two other sculptors that aren't in our usual Lord of the Rings uh, cadre of sculptors. I think I have at least three or four versions of the Witch King now on Fell Beast. No, more like five. Uh, Grand Org. Actually, you know that I might. Uh, I might paint one of the smaller Dark Sword Dragons on stream. I know I want to obviously do those as videos and stuff, but I, I think, well, especially once the things like the garage is built, and maybe we can go to more like the six, seven hour streams, then maybe we can do one of the Dark Sword Dragons. All right, let me do this one here. And then after a while, those just are kind of too small to mess around with. Might try one more up here and then let me see what we can do up here as far as those uh, again the peacock markings on these feathers. There's uh, obviously there's the dark blue, and each one of these uh, references kind of shows a different color there. Yeah, guys, sorry that this is a little bit later today again with the uh, with all the moving around of stuff, and uh, well, last night's was even later. Holy smokes, that was uh, quite the late start. I'm starting to, well, okay, let me just maybe throw a couple of them out here. I'll just do a few of this. And again, the only reason that's sticking like that is because this paint is thinner. We do have some thinner in that brush. Or in the paint there, sorry. So, guys, you have a good night there. Thank you so much for being here, of course. Appreciate that. Actually... Well, and here's that we're going to show the classic changing things up because that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that and we're going to change that to this. Again, uh, the oils are a very flexible offense. It lets you call an audible. And you see, we got to do that again. We're going to do that. Yeah, so with the oils, you can uh, you can change the. It's uh, every five seconds. It's Omaha. I thought, what was the? Ah, uh, uh, somebody had their their. The oh, it was uh, Dak Prescott. What is his? Ah, uh, uh, what is his? It's not. Uh, Let's go home. What the heck is his uh, his version of Omaha now? It's still weird uh, to think of him playing at uh, Mississippi State. Remember those days. All right, let me get a little bit more on my lighter green right down in or the light uh, part of our little markings. No, nah, no, nah, we'll. Let's put it over here. There we have a big old feather right there. Let's just use that since we have it. All right, leave those be. Now, what what's happening over here? This is another audible that we're going to do here. Push that maybe down to there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's push it down to there. And we'll do one over 
here. And now we gotta get there. There's a little bit of a kind of a bluishness to this. Some of the Prussian blue. No, 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 no. How's about the, well, we've got Prussian and ultramarine. We have plush marine. We we have a plush marine blue right here. Well, that's actually kind of an interesting little color right there. Our plush marine blue. Uh, I will lighten up a little touch of it. Not the whole thing, but just this much here. Let's try this first with our plush marine blue. And then we'll get the, uh, the, yeah, that might be a little too light or too dark there, but we'll, we'll come back to it and we'll lighten it up and then hit the really dark portion of it. Uh, land dress, as long as, uh, as long as you can escape the talons or the beak, then, uh, feel, feel free, have at it. Just uh, steer clear of those talons. They're mighty sharp. Yeah, we're going to do this, and then we'll probably hit a little bit more of the light there, too. Yeah, those are not quite true. Uh, here, okay, this we'll, we'll give it a shot up here. Let me see. And if these don't really translate there... We will make a change because those not really again that how many times have I said with free hand it's got to read right? Oh, actually, hey Landrest, so uh, how is the RPG stuff going there? I'm assuming that the player characters continue to uh, proceed through the adventure there, mostly intact. Do this, and then we got to get that. I'm going to go to more of a green for around the perimeter of these. Boy, I should maybe... Okay, here, I'm just going to throw that up there. And just uh, grab some of this, throw it around that real quick. Okay, good, good enough, good enough. So Landress says that that is more than worth it. Again, you just you gotta look out for those talons. More of our again, that uh, sort of looks like the eye here. Uh, these wings aren't necessarily in the shape of a peacock, so that's why we have to kind of be willing to make some modifications here. What's that thalo green? Okay, here we go. Maybe thalo green. So we have a Thrussian blue, thalo green, and Prussian blue. Uh, yeah, that, that Prussian green, boy, that did not work out terribly well. That was a little bit of a disappointment there. That will have to, uh, we'll be using that as some of our, when we're painting backgrounds. And hopefully now that's going to start to look a bit more like those little peacock spots. Thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting the GoFundMe campaign again uh, for all the folks that uh, contributed in the last few weeks. That's very helpful. Again, with the theft of the vehicle and uh, and trying to do the garage stuff and trying to do all the uh, home repair stuff, that is super helpful. Because obviously uh, none of that leaves any time for doing anything like commission stuff. Which uh, puts a curb on the finances. But we're this is starting to work out. And remember, we can still go lighter with that light. We also have the very darkest part of the little, well, eyes here. So this again is a mix of thalo green and Prussian blue. Can 
continuing with that around all of these, maybe a little thicker there. And around, and I, uh, I could have used, uh, back in the day, I might have used cadmium green for this or something like that, but boy, that would have taken forever to dry, because, well, cadmium, cadmium anything, going to take a long time to dry. But that's why we're kind of like in the, the Indian yellow fast matte white mix. Gonna get the, yeah, we gotta get, we'll do all the dark stuff on the other ones. We have this now. So yeah, okay, at first I was saying, I don't even know if that's going to work. We might actually add a few more out here on some of these leaves, like maybe out there. I'm just going to put that out there in advance. And oh, that's right, we never did do one over here. So just be a little bit of a reminder that we need to do one over here. Okay. Now let's get the uh, darker outline stuff around one of these. Uh, over here, let's do this too. And that really does start to uh, give me the impression of kind of the whole peacock feathers there. We'll, we'll try and do some interruptions of these as well, kind of putting a little bit of maybe feather texture in them or something. Something subtle, nothing crazy. And remember, we still got to get the darkest dark into those. Yeah, it uh, kind of makes them look like little eyeballs there. Curious to see what that does on these, uh, the ones on the front there. And we got the ones in the top wings too. Let's not forget those. Uh, yeah, we can always come back again. Okay, come back with that latest light and uh, change up some of the shapes on these or whatever. We'll do that on these ones up there. Not so much down here, because these are, well, supposed to be in shadow. So yeah, we won't be coming back in and doing the lightest light uh, sand. These ones that are really facing down towards the ground. This one over here. What are we at, about two and a half hours? Yep, yeah, two hours, 36 minutes in. And now we're even getting to our freehand. Like so. I don't know, yeah, I'm not gonna do those on the inside. I'll leave that leave that be. Here, let me see if we can. Tweak that a little bit, also so dark there. I try to use this thalo green for the uh, iris here. Okay, that works. So we got the eyes in place. Try and change at the bottom of that that lower lip there. Also, I might even darken this. We have a whole bunch of light there. Yeah, that's what we're missing. And that's yeah, it's thalo green shadow right there. Okay, that's that's what we were missing, I guess. Now the uh, well, for lack of a better the outline on these little 
guys down in here. Definitely, uh, definitely trickier with the way the wings are shaped here. You can see we're again we're holding that brush nowhere near that metal ferrule. So we always say that again, caress the brush, do not crush the brush. If I had a death grip like this, well, again, I'm not even getting paint on there. Miniatures tend to be painted more rapidly when the brush actually touches the figure. No, 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 let's do it this way here. Oh, gee whiz, we never did get the dark thing down in the end of that. So, yeah, that's another one that, wow, we're going to have to really kind of rebuild that one back there. Again, not, not a huge problem. Not a huge problem. We, we can take care of that. This one also is going to need to get some of that light in there to can change that shape around. Mostly again, thalo green. There is a little bit of the thalo. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, thalo green. There's some of the Prussian blue in there. You know, I'm also going to just put something like this up here, and then we'll, if we feel like, we'll go back into that with our uh, lighter color and rebuild that shape up first though let me get a touch of the green in that okay that's better Ooh, yeah do that over here i mean that is the shadow side of the face after all all right now there's our light here and maybe even we'll get a little touch of the uh, yellow into that little smidge of yellow into that here and let's try this okay that's uh, the fast matte white some of the yellow breaking it down with some thinner and then we'll add a little touch of that up here but just as you can see only on that top oh we have some more okay well we'll have to get back into our, our dark again but that's all right We got this over there to do, and uh, here not too much again with that light. Got over here is all right. This one's okay too because that's again that's where the light would be more likely to hit it. And yeah, that's it there. That's it. No more over there. These guys, again, we're hitting them not just with the lighter color, but we've got a little yellow in there that makes it a little warmer. And there you have it. Definitely need that over here. This one, not so much. This one a little more. So yeah, oh yeah, this one is too much like a bullseye. We have to push that further up. And we'll do that on these guys too. These are uh, again on the upper surface like this, so. This part catches more of that light. We never did do our little outline thing over here. That's all right. We'll, again, we can come back to it. It'll all be okay. I'm going to just do that uh, right now before we forget here. We'll just take this darker, again, that phthalo green with some of the Prussian blue in it. I might. I'm almost tempted to put 
another one of those up here. Now we'll just sometimes less is more. More is way too much. Actually, all the time, less is more, and more is way too much. Okay, and I'll carry over to here. Oof. That made a big old difference there. Uh, now this, I need some of my lightest light there. We'll get another bit of light on that. Because I can make this a little lighter too. And then again, that comes down to there. The I almost said beak, but helmet. Maybe a little reflected light in some spots over here. Where's my green again? Oh, look at that. That's still uh, pretty fresh. I can get back into this now because that has set after we did our little, uh, our little glazing routine over here. this away more of our green over there come on here we are now it would be interesting to print this one uh, more at 75 mil this is about well I guess you could say 54 who knows maybe it's 32 mil Maybe it's actually uh, 30 or 28 or something like that. It's just uh, supposed to be bigger, but yeah, we could print this one probably at about two, maybe even uh, yeah, 200 percent or something, and uh, see what we can do with our freehand designs here, with it being twice the size. All right. <laughs> this this one feather right there keeps really knocking the brush over to the side. Let me try this here again to get some dark into that. And now now the. Uh, Almost, but we'll just uh, indigo here. Touch of the Van Dyke brown, I suppose. And this will be the darkest part of the, well, for lack of a better term, the eyeballs here. Uh, what are we at? Uh, not, still not quite three hours yet. And it's uh, it, all it is is just a little bit of it dark over the top of this. So it's not a dot there. It's more like a little arc here of uh, some dark on top of that. Ooh, let's get this one. Almost tempted to come back into this with a little bit of a pinkish color uh, on the bottom section there. If we can even see that. Will I hit this again? Oh, uh, yeah, that too. Make that lighter. Oh, boy, we need one of these to have something on it. So I'll have to come back into that with our blues and our phthalo green and such. What else are we doing here? Okay, that 
I'm just curious about that. Oh, you know, I actually restore some of this over here. Yeah, there's a couple of these lines that are not quite as uh, sharp and crisp as I'd like them to be. So let's do that here. All, all this. Remember when this was very glossy because we had just done a bunch of different uh, kind of glazing in there? Well, that is, it's not dry, but it is most definitely set. And that's just, uh, think of it like a bread in the proving drawer. You know, just mix up that dough and then chuck it into the oven. You actually let it prove a little bit. I realize we did get a couple of our little eyeballs is up there too. Let me get this one. Another one over there that we tried to do. Believe it or not, there was a tiny one right there. But those don't really show up too much. I might add a few more of these in some place. Yeah, let's just let's add a couple of more of these. So we'll go back here to to this. At least one of them over here and then this one we need to make it a little bigger again we can change these things around oh yeah we did have one over there and let's make one here as well I'm actually going to add one over here these are the constant adjustments that we're always talking about here. Always making adjustments. I mean, it's easy enough with the oils. Might as well take advantage of it. Boy, oh boy. And that, see, that's uh, if we had tried doing this, I don't know, an hour and a half ago, that would not have gone so well. But we've been patient, like an ant, and not been hasty. Okay, so we'll redo that bit and also this one too. Okay. Yeah, so we've added a few. Uh, you know what, I might as well just do this one. And I'll also change that around a little. So it is now, now it's a happy Sunday here. So for folks where it is uh, in the central time zone, it's Sunday here now. Obviously, uh, in Australia there it's probably closer to Monday than it is Saturday but now the dark around the perimeter that's that the phthalo green mixed with the Prussian blue you know what I'll hit this one as well And then we'll come back with our, our <coughs> latest light again. I think we did that. Yeah, we did that before we did our really dark color. We hit that. We hit this over here. This one for sure. Now here, I think I'm going to go thicker with the paint showing up and that sticks thicker paint sticks to the thinner paint and vice versa let's hit up some light over here what is going on up there 
do whatever that's that's it okay and you know what the other thing is we gotta get mm, I, oh let me see what we can do with this here this is the same stuff we've been using on the uh, interior of the our little eyeballs here I'm gonna see if we can't make some use of this over here because all we've got down in here is a uh, pre-glaze and a whole lot of nothing else you know what okay fine I'm actually gonna mix a little bit of the radiant violet into that that uh, that's the already got a little bit of a reddish tint there from the ultramarine blue yeah that's from Williamsburg that is a really really intense color I, I thought about breaking out even the uh, cobalt blue here it's very close to pulling the trigger on that All right, what are we doing here? Let's uh, keep going with this blue here. Let me get some of that on the inner portion of the leg. Let's grab this blending brush. Let that get blended together. I guess we'll try to lighten this up here. Uh, so bits run uh I guess how did the dice treat you were they just kind of average dice or were they just uh, was it kind of one of those things where the dice were mostly until you really needed a roll and that's or you know, your opponent always got the roll that they needed at just the right time because again you can have below average dice or just very average dice and yet still have very devastating dice rolls because you know, if you get those ones that you really need, it doesn't matter if there's some ancillary ones that maybe don't go. Yeah, Bithron, I was I was wondering about that. Something told me that maybe the dice were a little bit mischievous too. Uh, actually, Bith, I mean, there's just one of those. Okay, it's you've got five dice. And any one of them can be a two or better, and you'll be great. And of course, none of it. Or you, it's re-roll ones, and you roll nothing but twos, because reasons, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I suppose uh, it, it's, I guess it's, it's a double-edged sword there, because uh, it, it is frustrating. Ways, oh, geez, it just was this one activation, this one roll. But then also, too, it was, you know, that, okay, were it not for that one activation or whatever, I could have won that. So at least there you don't think, well, gee whiz, I didn't really play that game very well. It, if it comes down to that, it's more like, well, just could not get that one lucky roll. Ah, uh, boy, Bithron, yeah, priority rolls, that, that sounds... Uh, Sounds so much uh, Middle Earth like. Now, Bithron, I did send a message to the one guy again. He, with the new baby and everything, I wasn't gonna even bring that up. But I did. Uh, I did tell him. I said, "Look, in what I see in the rules, those resurrection rolls, those are threes or better. Those are not two or better. Because believe me, if it was threes or better." I would have crushed that Dogledur army twice. Absolutely annihilated it. Yeah, Bithron, it's sort of like, well, not being able to win key priorities in MESBG, or you lose all of the, uh, the heroic action roll-offs. Absolutely hate losing those. Because, like, like I say, I mean, you do everything, everything right, but uh, it just it doesn't matter because, well, I just I can't win those roll-offs, can't get the priorities. D 
these guys also need that drug here. Ironically enough, the that mid-range blue part was more of a mid-range, not quite as dark as what we did in some of the ones back here. Alright, let me get that dark over here, also over there. You know what, these talons... Maybe these could also be a little dark, or at least a little more defined. Maybe we just need to define those a little more. Ah, uh, that, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Malifaux, I think, uses uh, playing cards. And that probably is for activations or whatever. Uh, and I know there was uh, uh, Deadlands, right? I think that was an RPG game where it was, it was the same thing. Your kind of your initiative and everything that was all pretty much done via well cards. Yeah, bits around. Well, there's certainly some randomness there. I guess there's some factions that maybe minimize that or mitigate that in some way. I just keep thinking of uh, for folks like Elrond with the foresight and stuff. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna see if I can't bring back in a little. Of the dark there. Uh, let's see. Ah, other factions, they can tell you. That's what I thought. Now, uh, you know what? This also needs to get that really bright hit there. Now, I don't know if your armies uh, just keep thinking of, say, lizard men and my tomb kings, which uh, where their initiative was always just low, as in, like, the lowest in the game. I don't know. I'm wondering here, do I come back with some... more darks on the foot there? Ah, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. So that okay, we'll we'll take that green there. The lips. I, I might either have to go back with some more Prussian blue, or we go darker than that. Not so sure just yet. I have to figure that out. Do we on the upper lip there? I also kind of need to sharpen up the edge just a touch there. Yeah, we got. Indigo, you know, I'll take, okay, fine, I'll put a little bit of our uh, plush marine blue in there. <laughs> that's uh, that's just the Prussian blue and the ultramarine. I'm going to try for the bottom. Oh, yeah, that, that might have... Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so that really cleans that up big time. Now, on the actual peacock, this is probably much darker, almost black or whatever, but we're gonna go more with this gold type of a look to it here, I think. Okay, that's more like it there. Now, well, Bithron, uh, that's... I mean, right, you'd, you'd only had a few practice games, really. It, it, it can be hard to remember those because, well, you just... If you had played a dozen games or something like that, well, you would have remembered. 
now here's where I'm going to see about some of that uh, the basically the spine of that feather is going to kind of go through the design there kind of anchors that down and makes it uh, makes it part of his feathers Yeah, Bithra, I know, uh, I, I tried to make cheat sheets sometimes, uh, where it was just kind of either, you know, like the, the sequence of a, the, like a turn sequence or something, but then, okay, like with Middle Earth, I almost need to have a little cheat sheet that reminds me that there's things like faint and stab and, uh, what's the other one, piercing strike and all those kind of things, because otherwise I'll just forget about it in the heat of the moment, right? And especially the longer the tournament goes. Hopefully the uh, the food break came at a good time. Again, sorry, you couldn't get more wins out of it. Uh, but uh, now you're a little better prepared, hopefully maybe for the next one. Let me get my little more of the dark and these uh, recesses of some of these here feathers. Hey, Sublime, how you doing? Thank you so much, Sublime. Appreciate that. Yeah, I was hoping when I. You know, as soon as I saw the this thing here, I thought, I wonder if the whole peacock thing is something that could be done on it. And uh, as I was trying to set this thing up earlier, right, with all of the the greens and everything, I was I was hoping that that could could work and, and just give some kind of impression of the uh, the peacock type look. So happy Sunday there, Sublime. Oh yeah, it's, it's officially now Sunday here. We're 15 minutes into Sunday. Now it is at 12.14. I might actually try to throw a little more of the extreme dark down in there. When in doubt, make things darker. So yeah, we'll we'll try to maybe print out a 72 mil version of this, so that we can maybe have a little bit more of the feathers to work with, and go even more bonkers with the freehand stuff here. Uh, thanks, Sublime. Appreciate the kind words. <clears throat> and again, I uh, hope you had yourself a sensational weekend so far. There we go. Let's get some of the junk down in there. Yeah, these are definitely, they are hard to reach on the inside. That's why there's not quite so many of them there. Also, too, there's uh, much more interruptions with the feathers, whereas here it's a little more open. So you could see him just a bit better out there. And of course, we will try to end a little bit here. Where's our other little example there? So we'll try and do something like that with the wood grain on this. And again, this is a uh, 3D print here. That's not actually a wooden plant. That's just a printed, printed one. I'll be thrown again. I'm, I'm glad you were able to do that again. Obviously, uh, it, it was probably going to be a bit of a challenge having, you know, being relatively new to that game and not having a chance to really practice up the, that tournament list over and over. There was only one time I ever got to do anything like that. That was with my, it was at that 2012 tournament. Man, oh man, that was 11 years ago. That was that was my one and only Lord of the Rings tournament. Any more dork in there? Yeah. Hey there, hooty hoot. Nice to see ya. 
Now, uh, Bitter, I'm glad that they had some decent prize support there as well. So, who do you? Happy Sunday to you. I hope that you are doing very, very well, of course. Now, what about... Tempted to throw a little bit more of a green there. Or should we go more with the... Light. I was to do, do some of the darker green. Let me see what I can do with this. Yeah, we better get a little more green into that. Okay. Wow, that should be later. We'll see. Now, these uh, bits around that thing is gargantuan, and I think that was that's like a hundred, almost close to two hundred hours, right? That really big brontosaurus thing. With the the howda on it and such. But uh, Bithron, well, we are getting closer and closer to when that uh, that McFarland's toys Smaug is supposed to get here. And again, at essentially forty dollars on Amazon to try and print out something to be the size that it needs to be for MESBG. That could cost you 25 bucks worth of resin anyways. Ah, so it's about 200 Yeah, I remember uh, seeing like 190 or whatever, and obviously any kind of tax or shipping will add on to that. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, so, uh, Sublime, actually, uh, let's see. Not quite, uh, I'm not quite sure what, uh, you'll have to give me a little more info on the, uh, on the hard, the external hard drive thing. Now the oh, the uh, hard drive. That's for all of the video segments. So like here, okay, this is the latest tutorial video. Now there was three videos in this series, and you have to figure there's the raw footage, which takes up space, which has to be stored in at least one other place, maybe two. Then there's the rendered video, and then all of the images, all the pictures, right? So all that stuff has to be at least in two different places, if not maybe three. So that's uh, that's why the hard drives are needed, those extra external ones, because those also, uh, to be able to transfer those video segments from the machines where I do the filming to the machine that does the editing and the rendering, those are... Uh, really large files and best to do those with the, uh, just taking a hard drive, plug it in, unplug it, and carry it somewhere else. Uh, well, Bithron, uh, well, that, that's for the War Dunes, right? Well, Bithron, I mean, who knows, maybe then one day you could just have a War Dune army, and I would imagine that's so many points that you wouldn't need much else to fill out the rest of the army, potentially. So that that's uh, it could have been like an army starter, I guess <laughs> you could call it that. You know, I need to get a little bit of lighter green-ish uh, stuff here. Not not too much, but uh, also might even have it. Uh, remember, we're talking about cooler greens, so that's the thalo green. That's going to be a little cooler, but not as cool as say the blue there. Okay, that's good. Now, so hooty hoot, this is from Great Grimoire. There's actually a bust of this as well. So it's a 3D print. Uh, if you remember the basing video that we did, remember we did uh, these. Actually, uh, this was also part of it here. And uh, this one was too. If you remember, this one was part of it. So again, we were using these uh, plinths here. So that was uh, also part of our basing video. And then we did some of the busts as well, uh, like this uh, Naraya bust right here. So again, that same 
same plinth used for something uh, well completely different there. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to throw this over here. Oh, thanks, Sublime. Uh, actually, the the fastest delivery works fine because well, I will certainly be anchored here because uh, well, with the garage construction happening, I won't I won't be leaving the house. That's why. Oh, I better I'm gonna definitely have to get to the store tomorrow. I just realized. Holy smokes! Yes, better do that tomorrow. It's either to do that or hold your peace, so to speak. So thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting a link to the Patreon page. Are we throwing some of that over here? Yes, we shall. Yeah, Sublime. I think at this point, oh boy, there's got to be somewhere in the neighborhood of... 45, 46 terabytes worth of backup drives just with all kinds of you know, video files and then of course all the images too, all the images that you see on the videos and such. It's a little scary and uh, to be honest I should be doing another yet another backup I think, what was it, oh my gosh, two weeks ago or something like that, as I was doing other things, I spent hours just transferring rendered videos off of the main machine because, well, that was taking up so much space. It actually had filled an 8 terabyte drive. Well, thanks, Sublime. Appreciate that. Hey, real brush guy, how the heck are you doing? Great to see ya. Great to see ya. Usually I just end up seeing ya and whoever I raid into. So, uh, real brush guy, hopefully uh, the painting stuff goes well. And uh, obviously anything that you might have painted. Same thing there, Sublime. If you wanted to share stuff that you've been painting, I want to chuck that into the chat there. An Instagram, Discord link, whatever. Actually, uh, real brush guy, have you been able to do uh, any streams over the last month or two? I know that was something that you were trying to trying to get going there. So again, we got the blue there, and then the the green over there. No, oh, and oh yeah, sublime. I completely forgot. There's another thing that takes up a ton of space in Grant Oracle and Valfir, and everyone else will say, "Well, yes, it does." Same thing with Landrast, STL files, much like this, and this. That's right. I knew it's like there's something else that chews up a whole ton. Oh yeah, that would be all the STL files. And much like anything else, well, you want them saved in multiple locations. And then also, huh, once you do all those Chidubox uh, build plates, well, you want to save those too. And that, while those don't uh, necessarily take up as much space as, say, an STL file, yeah, that's, that's the other hog that eats them up. Uh, thank you so much, Sublime. Appreciate that. Thank the ooh, uh, yeah, let's get a little bit more of that in here. Now, I will be trying to get some of these uh, ready to paint up on stream. So, uh, this was part of a tutorial video here, but it uh, be fun to paint some more of these. And I'm going to try a little different uh, take on the interference colors after Landrast suggested mixing the powders before putting the uh, linseed oil into them. Ah, uh, well, sorry, uh, brush guy. I know that's not terribly fun. Is this... I'm going to try this here. Let me let me see what happens with this. This is, uh, again, that's the ultramarine blue there. We are going to try to get a little bit of reflected light. So I'm just going to chuck that on there. 
I might even just use this as a blending brush. Let me see if this will work here. Now, uh, yes, Sublime, the, well, uh, the the climbing and the outrunning, you know, the, the climbing part, that is definitely, that requires some youthful exuberance, doesn't it? Well, thank you so much, Sublime, appreciate that. Yes, those activities are definitely more for the uh, the younger crowd. Well, less likely to get injured, that's for sure. But as somebody that was always, well, of course, we called that class lettering and design way back in Academy days. The, the graffiti stuff was always very interesting to me because that was that was folk create literally creating their own fonts which uh, to me that's really cool this is making up your own font because again as uh, someone who did calligraphy really enjoyed calligraphy and actually uh so, but even even when I was at the academy, there were some folks that were doing a graffiti style lettering and design. Even even at the academy, All right, where's my blending brush here? Let's throw that in like so. There we are. Now, yes, so I could see that having quite an interesting impact on the handwriting for sure. Now, I mean, uh, well, I I had gotten when I was uh, when I was a kid, I was given I think I was 12 years old, I think, when they gave me one of those uh, kind of calligraphy workbooks, and that was actually a guy on public television that was doing. He did calligraphy. He actually used these uh, special beveled markers and as I've been trying to recover and rework the basement and everything I did actually recover some of those old books so I still have those after all these years I can't believe it but yes I still do have those calligraphy books always enjoyed calligraphy I want to try and get a little bit of this again. That's kind of a violet colored blue there. Might still try it a little bit more on my light up here. See if we can make that work. Uh, well that, uh, that should be very fun there, Real Brush Guy. Actually, hey, Real Brush Guy, again, if you wanted to share some of your, uh, some of your links there in the chat. I know you had those, uh, there was a series of busts also that you had been working on there a while back. I seem to remember that. Oh, you know what, we could lighten this up a little more. Yes, we could. Maybe this, uh, no, not that shoulder because that head's going to cast a shadow on that. 